you know that genetics plays a role into whether or not your earwax is wet or solid? <laughs> Absolutely not want to switch bodies with you. <laughs> Why? Why not? My body doesn't do weird things. You're gross. <laughs> Crosswind is a story about a Chicago hitman, Chicago, and a stepmom named Juniper. Is just is she a stay-at-home stepmom? Yes. I feel like she is. She's a housewife. She's a housewife. And they do what happens in Freaky Friday. They switch bodies. They switch bodies. This story it was written by Gail Simone. Uh, you can't just finish my sentences like that. That's not what I was going to say. You were taking too long. <laughs> I was formulating a thought. So while you were formulating, I was Hold informing. On. I grabbed the thought. Here it is. <laughs> and the thought that I was going to say before you really you interrupted. You do that to me all the time. <laughs> just so you know. What do you think I was going to say? It didn't matter because I said something else. This story is definitely a story that took me at least two or three times of rereading the first issue and then rereading the, the second and third issue um, multiple times just to appreciate it. I'm, I'm not sure what that says about the story. Or what that says about you. Or what that says about me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it started mid-scene, right? Yeah, it starts mid-scene and with both characters in the middle of what a day in the life a is like life. for them. I didn't like the writing style. I didn't hate the writing style. I thought it was good. I didn't think ill of it. And, yeah. You know, and I didn't think it was out of the park. It's, we're just telling the story getting to the point because I could feel how, I could see how this could get really confusing really quick and I could see how it could trail on for a long time and I felt like it hit all those necessary beats and got the information to you. <laughs> I read it once and I was fine. I had to read it three times, Jenna. Three times. Well, I know because you don't read a lot. I don't. And you know what? Actually, you bring up a really good point. I think the reason why it took me three times to read it or to get it was because I didn't like the art. Uh, because you were forced to read it? I was forced to read this story. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> I was literally forced to read this. But I do like the way that Gail Simone um, wrote and how the characters are, are so the main focal point. Uh, before you actually get to the premise of the story. The characters themselves, they're very, they're completely individual. They have their own personalities and even the minor characters have, like, they're very well written. I would definitely say that Juniper's life sucks. Like, bad. It does, because <laughs> the first scene you see of her, I think she's being like cursed at or something. Yeah, so her neighbor- She's being harassed. She has very rude neighbors. Yeah. And the way that she's treated throughout the story is, I feel like it's significant in terms of it kind of mirrors how women are treated in society. So it's symbolic, you would say? Yes, it's definitely symbolic. So I appreciate that in terms of Gail's writing style um, by putting things like that in there. But sometimes I felt like the things that these neighbors would say was a little too out there. Like it, was. it wasn't like something that people say normally. It's, and I think that's fine because it was hyperbolic. So it's just taking a stylistic choice, I would say. Yeah. yeah. You know, because you only have so many pages to get to the point. So maybe that was a little bit of a turnoff for me then and why it took me a couple times to read it was because of those little, those things that were kind of out there or like little wrenches in terms of the writing style. Right. Or the na so it, narration. It interrupted your uh, sense of disbelief. Oh, absolutely. The other character, Kaysen, oh, he's yes. out of his mind. He's very belligerent and vehement. And you think so? But he knows how to cook. I mean, he knows how to do all the things that hitmen do. <laughs> and so does she, apparently. That's because within a housewife and a hitman, the cleanup is the same. So, <laughs> so, I mean, it's like you're always cleaning up a murder scene. Exactly, she knows how to clean stuff up. But like you that. like blood and there's a lot of blood in uh, this. I don't wanna talk about the art yet. Okay. Not yet. 
not getting there yet. <laughs> I like that you have to really pay attention to the writing and what the characters are doing. Like the opening scene is really important in telling of uh, what kind of character Kaysen is. And this is one reason why I prefer trade paperbacks more, or I appreciate them more rather than reading something issue by issue because it's easier to piece together when you read it straight through. But I can say that after reading the first one, I was a little meh. But then after getting to the third one, the third one was probably the best. Mm -hmm. in, my, in my opinion, I think the third issue was the best of the series so far. So it definitely allowed me to be a little bit more excited in terms of continuing to read this. But like Jenna is saying, I would definitely read this as a trade instead of single issues. I don't really think it's worth reading as single issues because it's just, I don't know, I think it's a little bit confusing. I was able to follow it pretty well. <laughs> Just because you pro you probably found it confusing because maybe you didn't like it as much as I liked it. Mm -hmm. Like when you like something, you're more likely to remember it. This is actually really cinematic in the way that it does play out. Mm -hmm. It does hit a lot of like the same type of beats that a film would hit. I want to talk about the art now. <laughs> okay, she's ready. Gear up, folks. I don't like it. I'm not into the photorealistic style. It's not that it's bad. It's simply a preference. A preference, absolutely. I can say that the coloring helped in terms of the photo photorealism and how stiff it felt. Um, it was like super dark and flashes of neon and some pops of color here and there. It didn't really follow uh, like a palette? No, I don't, eh, I guess that would be the palette, just like dark with highlights of neon. Yeah, bright colors. So going back to Loving Blood, <laughs> it, it just didn't, it, that's so strange because now that I'm thinking about it, it's so photorealistic, but the blood, like when they were shooting and the blood scenes, mm -hmm. that didn't look very real. Or it just looked very, uh, like video gamey. That it's very digital, so it does feel kind of video right. gamey. Yeah, because when I was first reading this, I didn't know if it was actual photorealism, where they took the photo and then they, you know, took, went back to the computer and made it look like a drawing. Uh, but it, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's. I'm pretty sure that it's just drawing. Yeah. Because one of my friends, um, well, him and his brother, the Burrell brothers, they made a comic called Gray. And, oh, I forget the other the name of the other one. Oh, Brial. Brial and Gray. They're two separate comics. And they actually took the photo. They set up the scenes with the actors, took the photos, and then Jared Burrell took the photos and stylized them into a comic book. What? Yeah. It's really cool. Another thing that I didn't like about this was the panel layout. Um, I think it was a little bit confusing in terms of how it was hard to follow. <laughs> the panels are hard to follow because uh, it would I could see that be connected uh, on one page and yeah, just the panel layout was a little strange. But I get it if we're gonna talk about it in an artistic point of view. It's it was done to I think it was done to make the reader feel as uncomfortable and unstable as the characters felt by switching and being in this other person's right, body. and being confused. It was definitely a great way to break the rules. If they told this frame by frame by frame by frame mm -hmm. kind of paneling, it would be kind of boring yeah. in that respect. Whereas yeah. it's like everything like pops out at you and you're like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah, and that's true. But I think it's more exciting that way. There's always a positive though. <laughs> there's always a positive oh, yeah. to everything. And um, with this art, I would say that Cat Stags is really good with facial expressions. Yes, I really love the facial expressions. That's one thing when I was like, wait, is this actually a photo of a person or is this a drawing? That's where I, that's gave me that confusion. Because sometimes you look at it, you're like, okay, this is just a drawing. But then other times when you, like, she does like the close up of the faces and she does them in like very um, poignant moments. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Lisa, I'm oh. in your body. This is disgusting. I'm Lisa and I don't like anything that Jenna likes. And I on principle. like all the weirdest things. I listen to Rush um, on the daily. I listen to like very eclectic indie bands and I make playlists 
all the time. Didn't find it entertaining, but I also did find it entertaining. I just, it just, it just, it didn't do it for me. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's not my kind of thing. It's your thing. I really liked it. You just don't get it. It's not something that I would read normally, but I really enjoyed it. It's different than, from what I'm normally reading. Like I read Batgirl and Gail has written issues of Batgirl before. So I thought this was really interesting. I would rate it an eight out of eight. An eight out of eight? Yeah, I liked it. An eight out of eight. I, I would rate this like, A five and a half out of eight. What? Yeah. I just, I liked it, but I feel like it could be better. How could it be better, Lisa? The art. You just don't get it. You don't read. I know, but the art. It's just, the art's my thing. I don't, I don't read. I, I just. And that's probably why I didn't get it, because I was just too busy looking at the art instead of reading it. Let's start a fire! Only figuratively! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm sorry that uh, Jenna inhabited my body. Or, or you inhabited I mine. inhabited Jenna's body. That was really disgusting. But... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I showered. I'm glad that only lasted for like two seconds. And please don't forget to subscribe. Comment. Ring the bell. Let us know if you read Crosswind. Or if you're reading something. Or if you watch Crossroads. Bye!